jump in and ask, I am happy to be available to that. So let's go ahead and start off seated. And I invite you to find your non-habitual seat. So whatever your pattern is, go ahead and switch that up. And if you need to add any little extra support, like let's say you have hips that are really tight, you want to shim something underneath your knees or thighs, please feel welcome to do that. This non-habitual leg cross should feel a little bit awkward. That's by design. And there's a couple of reasons I love having my students do that, whether it's a flow class or a mouth class, it is a way to instantly be very aware and present. And it's also just a little reflection for you to, um, to notice how much patterning you have in that simplicity of a leg cross. So starting off here in something that is a little less familiar to you, let's go ahead and just set intention for practice tonight. Close your eyes. Invite your awareness into your breath. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, release through an open mouth. And we'll do two more breaths like that. Inhale fully. And exhale. And one more full deep breath like that. Inhale. And exhale. And then from there, you're welcome to open your eyes if you would like. I invite you to explore your breath space. So before we move into working with the connective tissue and melting the fascia of the body, let your breath be a sample or um, a, a metaphor for the way that you can start to investigate what you have going on inside and within the, the myofascial network. So as you breathe, bring your awareness into the area that feels most full. When you take an inhale, what is sensational to you? What fills? And then go ahead and softly allow your body to exhale. And with the next breath, see if you can tune into the area that feels tight. So what feels restricted? And sometimes for people that's into more of the upper chest, sometimes that's into the low belly, sometimes that's out into the side body. So just noticing what feels tight for you when you inhale. And then letting that out. And the last breath here, just inviting a three-dimensional quality to your awareness. What is amnetic or what in your breath space is going unnoticed? So if you are to invite your breath to be three-dimensional, breathing down, out, and back, what is kind of quiet and, and under the radar? And can you start to explore for that quality, that quiet space? So be it up under the collarbones or more into your back. Go ahead and see if you can explore for breathing into those three areas evenly, the sensational, the tight, and the quiet space, and three-dimensional quality, feeling all of that evenly. And as we practice tonight, my hope for you is that we start to discover these areas that while we might feel tension in one spot, that might be your tight spot, might be your sensational spot, we're gonna sort of peel back the layers of the onion and start to notice those, um, those amnestic areas that need a little bit more hydration, they need a little more circulation, a little more life brought into them. And they're probably gonna be the yowzer stuff that you encounter with your, your myofascial tools. So breathing here, observing those places, and I invite you to set intention for your practice tonight, just allowing curiosity to come in. So as you breathe, inviting in this quality of curiosity and wonder, and as you exhale, go ahead and release that which does not serve. So when we encounter these spots and you start to get into those, you know, we all have a little voice that comes in during uh, discomfort and you get that maybe negative self-talk or uh, just sort of resistant language that comes into the body, let that go. Let that go now with your intention. And then as you re-encounter it through practice, let this intention be an invitation to let that go too. So inhaling, inviting in your curious intention and exhaling and surrendering that which does not serve. And then from here, we're going to get right into it. So I will offer modifications for everything as mentioned. We're going to start off working with the quadriceps or the, uh, the musculature and the fascia through the front of the thigh. This tends to be really, really tight for a lot of us. It puts a lot of strain in the back. So go ahead and find your way to face the top of your mat. You're going to see me uh, mostly from a side perspective. And we'll start off with two blocks. You can also use a foam roller for this. So I'm going to offer different, uh, different options depending upon what you're in the mood for. But with two blocks, you'll bring the short ends together. 
So they're across your mat in front of you and you're kind of near the back third of your mat for now in a kneeling position. If kneeling this deep doesn't work for you, then you're gonna come up tall. And if you have any questions, again, please feel welcome to chime in and just let me know so that I can help you find something that works better. But once you've got those locks placed, you're gonna come down onto the blocks. And so those locks will be across the lower thighs, underneath the quads, right above your knees. So if you have any knee issues, uh, this is gonna be really nice for changing some of that, but it, you want the blocks or the roller to be at a place where it's not encountering any of the bone of the knee. So no kneecap contact with that. And then from there, upper body, you're welcome to have your forearms on the mat with your elbows under the shoulders and feel for a quality of lifting up through the front of your lumbar spine so that your lower back is long. You might even imagine, I don't want you to squeeze your glutes, but you might imagine that your tailbone kind of just drops a little closer to the mat. If this is too much for your upper body and it can get strenuous, sometimes I feel like it's too much, then you'll just bring your chest down and sort of find a spot that's accessible for you where you don't feel like you're restricting your breath or hunching your shoulders up into your ears. So it's kind of finding what works best for you there. And again, I'm gonna work up here for, for now. I might come down a little bit. We'll start to rock the hips side to side and you'll notice instantly all the hidden tension that you have in that lower compartment of the quadricep muscles. So that area above the knees, as we rock side to side, you'll start to find that you're rolling over some previously probably unaware tension. And this comes in a lot of forms. This is a movement that a lot of people encounter and go, oh my gosh, I had no idea that that was there. Um, so just observe how you experience this. This is a great way to get into noticing the internal dialogue that comes with some of this work. So some of us are gonna be here rocking side to side and we're inclined to you know, start to have some choice words under our breath. Um, you may notice that you hold your breath, like you're, you know, you're kind of in that intensity and you just sort of brace yourself and, and wait for it. And I encourage you to keep breathing, bring awareness into any inclination to hold the breath. Maybe you hunch your shoulders, like crawling away from it. And I want you to start to feel or dissolving that inclination and allowing your shoulders to be a little bit more open and allowing your jaw to be soft, letting your tongue gently rest in the mouth. So we'll work side to side here, three more, more rocks to each side, keeping that lift through the low belly, that length through the low back. And a lot of us work with, uh, when we work with myofascial tools like foam rollers, we tend to do longitudinal work where we go with the fibers of the muscle. So this practice, much of it is going to be across the fiber. So with this particular movement, I often think of like fanning the pages of a book. So we're kind of strumming through those fibers of the quadriceps by going across them instead of at length with them. So following those three to each side rocks, let's go ahead and reverse army crawl back a little bit. So now your blocks are under the upper thighs. And if you found that you started off there, you can adjust that as needed. And maybe you find that you work forward a little instead. If your blocks or roller are encountering your pubic bone, that's okay. Um, all of your, not all of, but a lot of your abdominal muscles attach there. So there's a lot of, of tacking down and adhesion in that spot too. You just want to notice that your shoulders are open and then we'll continue with that side to side movement here. And so as we rock here and we wonder like what is the purpose of opening this area up much of what we experience with low back pain low back tension compression in the low back is a reflection of tension through the front of the thigh and through the hip flexors. Um, so this is going to help free that up. And sometimes um, specifically with those of us that are um, seasoned horseback riders, we tend to oftentimes have a pretty posterior tilt to our pelvis. You know, we like to try to get our hips underneath our ribs and underneath our skull and our riding seat. And that over time can create this sort of stiff dynamic between the front and back body, specifically the low back and the front of the hip and the thigh. So opening this up is going to help free up that area and help relieve some of that stiffness as well. So again, working here and noticing your breath. And as I mentioned before, if you need to modify and come down, it is a little bit lighter on the thighs if you come down. You'll have a little bit more um, pressure if you're supported here on the forearms. So we'll do about three rocks here to each side. Three more, I should say. And notice two, sometimes you have a very different quality from one section to the next. So let's say, 
uh, you have an issue with your left knee, just an idea. You may notice that the top of your right thigh is actually tighter. Um, oftentimes the body wants to harmonize or balance things as best as it can, and it will do that on a staggering diagonal pattern. So just sort of working those rocks there. And then go ahead and back off. You'll bring your knees to the mat. You can kind of crawl your way back, come back gently as needed. You'll reach your hips back and up. Invite your hands out wide. Bring your heart down toward those blocks here. And just feel for that stretch in the front of the shoulder. You can adjust your hands wider if necessary, and even bring a little bend into the elbows. You're welcome to bring your chin down to the mat. I won't because you won't be able to hear me very well. Or you can turn your head and rest your cheek on the mat, and that's really nice too. And then from there, a little bit of a side-to-side -side rock to wake up the chest area. So you should feel this through the front of the shoulder, through the pectoral muscles. So just feeling that side-to-side -side movement, alternating left and right. Find center, take an inhale. And then as you exhale, so sit back, like the hands back, come to a supported hero's pose. Now, hero's pose is classically depicted as a kneeling posture with the feet wide to the hips. My knees don't love that depth, certainly not at this point in the practice. If you are comfortable with that, please feel welcomed. Um, but I'm going to encourage that you're either sitting on your heels, and if you need to modify this, that you can always put something behind your thighs so you can use something as, um, as much as a pillow, like I've got a little pillow here I can show you with. Or you can use something like a folded up blanket too. So there's ways to modify all of this and just create just a little extra support there so you don't have as much flexion in the knee joint. Once you've found your accessible supported hero's pose, you'll take one block on either side or use your hands without the blocks. And this will be, um, it's, you know, it really depends on proportion. So I have a very long torso my arms reach down pretty far. If I have the wedging of a pillow underneath, like I'm showing you now, then my hands aren't really going to make it to the mat. So I would, in that case, I would use blocks under my hands. You want your hands down by your hips here and being able to actually press into them so you can lift up just the tiniest bit there. So kind of see what works well for you. I'll show you without the blocks, but the blocks are absolutely a really nice tool to use. So let's find extension in the spine. Offer up your heart, inhale, let your elbows be soft and heavy. You can feel the front of the throat open, make sure the back of the neck stays long. And then as you exhale, round your spine, allow this round to be a supported length. So we're not slumping, it's not a collapsing, it's a hollowing. Think of it as a C shape there, your shoulders stay wide. Inhale, extend, feel the movement ascend through the spine one vertebrae at a time. And then as you exhale round, and on this round, let your hips rock back a little, allow your knees to come up. So you're gonna feel a pretty distinct stretch through the front of the ankle. And then allow those knees to come down. Inhale, extend, elbows soft and heavy. Exhale round, let those knees float up a little bit. Feel for the outer sides of the abdomen, kind of coarsening in there. Inhale, extend. Exhale to round. See how it works for you. Inhale, extend. Exhale, round. And we'll do one more breath like that. Inhale. And exhale. And then go ahead and gently release. We'll come on to the abdomen for this next piece. You're working with either one block or with a foam roller. I'm going to show you both. The block's probably gonna be a little bit more gentle than some of the rollers. Um, I'm gonna put my pillow aside now, but so different rollers, we have everything from a nice smooth soft roller to a very textured roller like this one. This was uh, my more travel um, comfortable option that I brought with me to my parents' house today. So this, uh, this particular roller is pretty aggressive. I don't recommend this unless you're used to this type of work, but I'm gonna show you anyway, because I have done it a little bit. So you'll come down onto your belly, working with those two tools accessible, be it block or roller. And let's start off with the right side being our working side. So you're gonna come right down onto your abdomen. And then from there, uh, so again, you could find that like sphinx pose option. You'll bring your right leg out to the side, the right knee is bent, and the foot comes out to the side as well. 
you're going to roll over to the left a little bit and slide that block or roller underneath the inner thigh so it's above the knee. So now we're getting into those really, really well uh, signaling and well-toned muscles that we use for so much of our leg work and riding. So here, take a moment, notice that your upper body feels open, feels uh, spacious and supported. Again, this can all be done laying very heavy on the mat. It doesn't have to be upright. I'm just showing you that option. And then we'll start to float that right foot up off the floor and swing it out and around. So we're going to create some circles with the right low leg, kind of like breaststroke kicks. And you'll notice pretty abruptly that you've got all kinds of hidden tension in those adductors. There is no amount of stretching in the world that will mobilize that kind of adhesion, that kind of sticking. So the sensations that come with a lot of this while you're doing it are not gonna be the most delicious feeling. It's after the practice, after the work, that things feel really good. Um, but right now you're probably feeling um, a little bit of like a bruise feeling you're probably feeling a little bit of a burn, like a friction burn almost. Those are indications of myofascial release. So those are actually things that we are looking for in terms of indications of the effectiveness of the work. So again, you can do this with a block, or if you want something a little bit more aggressive, I'll show you that option. I don't like the word aggressive for this practice, but uh, tenacious, let's use that. So if you've done a fair bit of myofascial work and that's going to be appropriate for your body, you'll start to work with maybe a, a more a textured, mother God, <laughs> roller um, and just see how that goes. It is a huge difference. The, the tool that you use, oh my gosh, there are so many varieties out there. I had a student last week who had wooden blocks. She had these really beautiful, like hard maple blocks. And I thought those have got to be pretty intense. So just working that there in that breaststroke kick with your right foot. And we'll do three more circles. And again, what happens in this discomfort? Like, do you hunch? Do you crawl away from yourself? Do you hold your breath? Get curious about it. And then go ahead and roll over just the slightest bit to the left so that now we're not really wading into that right side and bring either your roller or your block right up to the middle of that right inner thigh. And again, modify this. You know, I know for me, my upper body's getting a little tired of being supported, so I'm going to come down. And the movement here, less of a breaststroke, less of a circle. You can try that if you want, but more of like a little windshield wiper movement. So you're going to float that foot up and lower it down. And you can even rest your head on the back of your hands here if you'd like. Float it up. And soften the shoulders, let it come down. And just moving at your own pace here. A lot of this work, I encourage you to take it slow. So it's not about like, uh, get it over with quick movement. You actually want to feel the striation from one fiber to the next. Um, explore it. And that's why that intention around curiosity tonight is something that I really encourage because when we get into discomfort, we have a tendency to want to skip past it or go around it. And with this type of work, it's really helpful. It's very informative if you can be present in that and just really notice like, oh, oh my gosh, like from the mid thigh rolling toward the front of the thigh there, there's a, a very big difference in the quality of the, the sensation. So we'll work that there for three more lifts up and down. And one of the things I love most about this particular movement is that while we are releasing the connective tissue and the fascia through the inner thighs, we're also kind of squeezing and doing a little bit of work through the deeper support of the seat there. So you're getting into the external rotators in the seat, uh, some of the deeper hip muscles there, which are really helpful in terms of seat awareness when you're riding. They're also really helpful um, for stabilizing and things like mounting, like just being able to swing your leg up and over when you can get those to fire up, like that amnestic thing that I mentioned in the breath. It happens a lot in the seat. So with that last one, we'll move this up one more segment um, and you can adjust this as needed. So if you wanna revisit something, you're welcome to, but bring it right up close to the inner thigh, really close to the groin area. It's okay if you have a little bit of the um, cubic ramus or the bone of the inside edge of your pelvis against it. There are a lot of attachments there. 
and then we'll start to kind of move the hips side to side here. I find that that movement is best achieved when I'm up on my forearms, but that's just me. So just getting a little fresh with that roller or block and allowing your hips to rock side to side there. And we'll take this for another three rocks. Being in your breath. Noticing a spacious quality through your shoulders. And then following that third rock, we will gently roll over to the left side, slide that block or roller out, place it aside. And from here, invite yourself to a wide knee child's pose or um, as we did earlier, that happy puppy pose. So child's pose, your hips are gonna drop back toward your heels. You can bring your forehead down to the mat. That's really nice. If your hips and knees don't like that, then happy puppy pose is where we were earlier. Your hips are elevated and you bring your chest down. So it's a little less strain on your hip and knee joint. It does ask a lot more out of the chest and shoulders. Let's stay there for another three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Feeling for a quality of release with that exhale. One more breath there. Inhale. And exhale. And then go ahead and slide those hands in. Come up to table. So you're going to come up to hands and knees here. Table, uh, really nice for noticing the difference between left and right side of the body. So right now we've mobilized through the front of the thighs and through that inner right thigh. So we've got a big difference between left and right in the inner thigh. Relax your elbows for a moment. Really nice to get out of any locking in the joints there. And then just feel for creating almost like a suction cup quality in the shoulders. Uh, you might even imagine like rolling your shoulders a little. Lengthen your right leg back. You can tuck those toes, inhale. On your exhale, bend that right knee. Go ahead and press up through the heel. Press up through the heel. Notice that you lift up through the front of your lumbar spine there. So rather than letting this row a, a load of force into your lower back, you'll find opposition by lifting up through the front of the spine, making sure the front of that right hip is pointing straight down. Then dial that knee out to the side. Think of like a dog at a fire hydrant. So we're getting into those external rotator muscles again. And then just take it right back to neutral, the foot up to the sky, looking forward, making sure the neck is nice and long and take it out to the side. And if you feel any pinching or discomfort, you can just lower the elevation of it and that should help. So a lot of times if people do feel pinching, they'll feel it in the SI joint. We'll do that one more time. Take that knee out to the side and then back to center neutral. Take a breath there, inhale. As you exhale, dial it out and then swing it up and place that right foot outside of the right hand. If it doesn't make it all the way, grab the ankle with the hand, manually move it up. So now we have both hands on the inside of that right foot. Lengthen back through your left leg, tuck your left toes. You should be able to lift your left knee up off the mat with that. So with those toes tucked, you have enough support. Start to let your right knee sail out into space. You can roll into the outer edge of the foot. Everybody's hips are gonna determine a very different angle for this. My hips tend to be quite mobile. Um, so don't let this image of my hips be an example of what you're seeking. Just let it be an idea of what uh, might potentially lay down the road. So from here, we've got that right knee out to the side. With that left leg, start to, with those toes tucked, get active. So as that knee starts to come up, you're pressing through the heel. I want you to feel for a lift through the front of the spine. Think of bringing your pubic bone toward your sternum. So rather than letting your hips just kind of drop to the earth, you're actively engaging, almost like a tucking quality of the tailbone. I don't even like using that word. And then let that knee release down. Let it all be so soft and passive. Inhale. And as you exhale, feel that activation. And you should be fine. An opposing squeeze through the left side of the seat when you lift that up. And then let it soften, come down one more time. And find that lift and squeeze. And from there, let it come down. Walk your hands out to your left. Reach long through your right arm. Let your heart come down toward the earth. That right knee is still sailing out. Right now, you're feeling a pretty intense stretch through the outside of the right hip, so we're kind of, or inside of the right hip, rather. We're kind of dusting out the cobwebs there. And then if you can feel that gentle lift through the front of the spine, you'll notice that the sensation will start to travel a little closer to the inner body and maybe up along that right side body into the ribs, into the arm, into the armpit. Find a little bit of movement here. So we never want anything to be static or still. So a little swaying side to side, a little rocking, a little swirling. 
I often like to imagine what it would be like if I was on a boat. So that just that gentle sway. Another breath there like that. And then go ahead and gently take it back to center. And lengthen the back of that right thigh. Invite your right hand to the outside of that right low leg. Right heel grounds, hands walk back, and we're coming into what's called runner stretch or Ardha Hanumanasana. This is one that people really like to have blocks for, so I'll show you that version. Blocks make it a lot more accessible if you place blocks under your hands. Um, it's not necessary, it's not required, but it does make it feel a little better. If you need extra cushion under that left knee, you can always fold the mat over lengthwise or tuck a little uh, pillow or folded blanket under there. So now we have that grounding through the back of the right knee. Make sure that you have a micro bend in your, I'm sorry, grounding through the back of the right heel. Make sure you have a micro bend in the knee joint there. Find a little bit of length, find extension in the spine. Inhale, imagine your heart reaching past the top edge of the mat. As you exhale, round. And when you round, feel for grounding into that heel and make sure that knee stays micro bent. So we are not hyperextending the knee joint. Inhale, extend. Exhale to round. And one more breath like that, inhale. Relax your shoulders wide, exhale. And gently come off of that leg, bring it back. Knees are side by side and we'll soften right back to our supported hero's pose with uh, the heels just kind of underneath the seat there. Find length, inhale, extend. As you exhale round, allow those knees to float up. Inhale, extend. So see if you can tune it into the difference of life from side to side. We've done a lot to mobilize and open up that right leg. Left leg should still be kind of asleep. And round. And one more breath there. Inhale, finding that extended length. Exhale to round. And then from here, before we move into the other side, I want to offer you some just a, something to consider. Spatial awareness changes all the time, depending upon where we are. Um, but being on a mat can be really helpful because you have the geometry of a rectangle to kind of measure squared qualities or alignment. And I've found this to be really helpful with riding if I can start to bring some of this uh, concept into the saddle or onto the horseback. So while we're here, bring your hands to your hips, those bony points of the hips. A lot of us are gonna have one side of the pelvis that's shifted a little bit forward, especially if you've taken a couple of falls over time, and that doesn't have to be recent. It could be 30 years ago. Typically, if you fall, you shift that side of your pelvis, whatever you land on forward, and then if you don't do the work to undo that, it becomes just part of who you are. Um, but that presents in a lot of other things that we try to correct in our writing. I'll tell you about that in a moment. So um, with the hands on the hips, I want you to just, if you can, imagine lining them up with a parallel line across the mat. So if it's the top of the mat, if that works for you spatially, great. If you need to imagine something a little closer in order to feel accurate, that's fine too. So just see if you can find parallel. And that might mean that your bony points to the hips make it feel like you're twisting your upper body. That's okay for now. I want you to just let that happen. And then just notice like how much adjustment, how much shift are you making in order to get that squaring quality. And that pattern of rotation that you might notice as your offset or you're twisting through your upper body in this case, it occurs below the pelvis all the way down both legs when we have a shift in the pelvis. Um, so for me, I've landed on my right side almost every time for whatever reason, I, it doesn't matter, 14 years old, 30 years old, every time I've fallen off, I always go onto this right side and over time it's gotten pushed pretty far forward. So if I pull that right side back so that it is now square with the left, I do a lot of work through the left side of my low abdomen to keep that squaring. Um, and it's very different than if I was just to say, align my shoulders, then I've got this staggering. So something to consider, we'll build on that as we move along, but uh, just a concept there, just to now where you've got the option of being spacious in one side of the body, see if you can find that quality of squaring. Um, Let's go ahead and come down onto the belly here. We're gonna find that inner thigh and adductor work on the left side. So supportive upper body, elbows under shoulders, or go ahead and lay down onto the chest. Option of block or roller. I'm gonna work with the roller since I used it on the other side. So you'll roll over to your right. You'll frog leg that left leg out to the side. 
placing that block or roller to the inner thigh just above the knee. Again, you don't want bony knee structure on your block or roller, so it should be in the meat of the muscle, not on the inside of the knee joint itself. And then we'll find those breaststroke kick circles there. And those are going to be very bittersweet, um, might be significantly different than the other side. So just kind of working that there. And again, what happens? Like, do you get a little internal dialogue? Are you swearing under your breath? Are you thinking of a story, maybe a memory? Maybe me mentioning some falling brought some stuff up for you. So that's another thing to definitely consider in this type of practice. Our tissue has memory. The body remembers everything. So you might have very strategically blocked something out. And sometimes that stuff will surface. And it may not be vivid in the way that it surfaces. So you might not be like, oh, tonight I was reminded of this. But you might feel the memory in your body later on, especially doing this leg and hip work. That type of work emotionally tends to bring up some feelings around stuff that we fear and around feelings of things that uh, we carry in terms of grief or sadness. So if you find yourself a little emotional later, that is not unusual after a practice that involves the legs and hips. So we're doing those breaststroke kick circles um, and just noticing, you know, the striation as you move around the circumference of that circle, all the different qualities that you might feel, be it a dull sensation, a sharp hotness or friction feeling, um, something that feels like it might leave a bruise, hopefully not. Bruising is not the end of the world. It's not a bad thing at all in these types of practices. However, it's not the goal either. So it isn't a burp to the chef, you know, the day after tomorrow when you go ahead and take a shower and realize that your legs are bruised. That's not what we're looking for. So we'll do three more circles here. And again, be mindful of breathing. And anything you need to release any kind of holding in the upper body, so adjusting as needed. And noticing your breath here, if your breath becomes shallow or short in an effort to kind of evade discomfort, roll a little bit over to your right so we can adjust that block or roller up higher. And you're gonna shift it up to the inside of the middle part of the thigh, so the middle inner thigh there. And then finding those little windshield wiper rolls, these ones tend to really get me. So that foot comes up. If you hear me holding my breath or <laughs> gritting my teeth or trying not to swear under my breath, that is why. This is super intense for me. So just working that there. And all the things that we do. So riding um, is a huge one, right, in terms of what causes a lot of this stuff to get here. And then we all do other stuff too. So I mean, nobody wants to do anything else, right? I say that in just that um, few things compare, let's put it that way. But we all do other stuff too. So, you know, like yesterday, I went ice skating for the first time in many, many years. And I was a little sore afterward. It's not something that I typically do. But we all get those moments where we do things that we haven't done in a while or that are not part of our regular pattern and they can leave us with a lot more tenderness than we expected. This practice by itself may be one of those things for you and I promise you that it's going to change the way you experience your ride. Um, something to notice when you get back on, be it tomorrow morning or the day after, in addition to that potential to have soreness, that like post-workout soreness, you might not feel quite as strong um, that's good actually. And, and, and it can be a little frustrating if you don't understand it. So if you're feeling, you know, that, you know, things are just a little less, um, accessible than you're used to, that means you're working with a different, uh, quality. That means that you're utilizing your body in a way that is not part of your habit or pattern. And that means that you're actually changing the composition of your tissue and you're working from a much more integrated and holistic place, which over time, if you can build strength from there, is going to be a much stronger and much more stabilized and efficient
place to ride from. So if you get back on the horse tomorrow or uh, let's see, today is Wednesday or Friday and you find that, you know, you feel a little bit weak, that's good. That's a beautiful thing. And that place that you feel a little bit weak is a wonderful place to step off and start to build a new quality of strength. So let's do that lower and lift a couple more times here on this side. And again, just exploring all of those little subtleties here. And then shift it one more time. So you roll over to your right a little, bring that block or roller right up to the groin area. This stuff is pretty fresh. Um, I always tease my students, you know, if somebody walked in the room right now, you'd be like, it's not what you think. <laughs> so you're on that roller. It's really intimate for that block. It's right up against that inner edge of the, the pubic ramus. And then you're going to come up onto your elbows if you weren't already and rock your hips edge to side. And just find the, all those little attachment sites there. All those adductor muscles that we use so much in our writing, they come right up the inner thigh and attach to the inner pubic um, ramus there. And then we've got the bottom edge of some of our core muscles that come in that spot too. So a couple more rocks there. And then we'll gently come off of that roller or block, take it up. Place that in front of you this time. So we were working uh, a little happy puppy pose or melting heart pose earlier. You'll bring your knees in a little bit closer. They can be about hip width distance apart. You are welcome to use a roller or blocks for this. You'll go ahead and bring your wrist onto either two blocks or one if you like. Like a narrow, so you can do this from wide, so you can, let's say, we'll create, you know, I've got a short roller here tonight, maybe you have a long one, but you're going to bring forearms and wrists onto those and bring the chest down. So now you're kind of in this unsupported suspension here, and you want to shift your knees so that they are right underneath your hips. You should be able to feel a freedom through the front of the hip crease there, and we'll activate this stretch. So now we're kind of hanging, and that's eh, not so hot, right? Press into your forearms, let the upper back float up, feel for lifting the low belly. And then go ahead and let it get soft and passive. And if you need to adjust either bending those elbows or bringing them wider, that can help if you feel any pinching. Inhale. As you exhale, float the back of the heart up. Press those forearms firm. And lower it down. And one more time, press it up. Lower it down. You should notice you got a little deeper each time. And gently release. You'll come off. You can come right up to table. Place your props aside for now. Eventually, we'll come into that runner stretch on the other side. So you might put a block on either side, and that'll get those accessible for you. So here you're in table, wrists under shoulders, knees underneath hips, elbows are on the lock, sign is long, front lumbar sign and low back. This is a great place to measure squaring of the hips too. So I like to lay what I call yoga Tetris. Um, when we tend to bring our leg out, which we will in a moment, like that fire hydrant movement, we tend to really roll over to one side. So it's a good place to get used to keeping those hips square. But even without the leg lifted, just notice, can you imagine the front, those bony points in the front of the hip, are they even? Is there a parallel line across them? It's very subtle, but if you can start to notice, you might even, like for me, I know my right side wants to drop more because it's naturally forward. So if I lift that to be level with the left, then my left obliques are gonna work a little bit more. So let's take that left leg out there Keep that lift through the front of the, the lumbar spine there. Feel the outside of the thigh. And then let's go ahead and press that foot up to the sky. That knee is bent around a 90 degree angle. So we're finding that press, finding that lift through the front lumbar spine. Elbows are unlocked. And then the knee comes out to the side, that fire hydrant action there, getting into those deep external rotators of the hip. And dial it up. The foot comes up. Take a breath. Invite it out. And up one more time and out one more time and then swinging that foot up to bring it outside of your left hand. Both hands are inside the left foot. Lengthen back through your right leg, right toes tuck. If you need extra cushion underneath your knee, you can always fold your mat over. Um, everybody's mat is a very different material, so some will work better than others. But you want to have to make sure that your knees are, are comfortable with this. From here, I like to pull the hips back just slightly to give a little bit more of a spacious quality. It depends on the shape of your bones. 
So everyone's uh, femur bone is shaped different. And then you'll invite that left knee to float or sail out, roll into the outer edge of the left foot. From there, you've got that left knee sailing out, dusting out the cuffs, right toes are tucked. You're gonna float that right knee up. You're drawing the front of the pelvis forward and that pubic bone coming up, squeeze into the right side of the seat and lower it down. Chest and shoulders nice and wide, float it up, exhale. Inhale, soften it down. And one more time, float it up and down. And then go ahead and walk those hands out to the right. Reach long through your left arm. Let that left knee continue to sail out and find just the slightest movement here. So this may be a little bit of a sway. This may be more of a swirl. You can even get a little sassy, like maybe a little bit of like a hula hoop circling of your hips. That's going to get a lot of core work going in there, really opening up through the QL, the muscular, musculature through the low back. And just finding that quality of spaciousness there. Another breath, elbows soft, shoulders relaxed, and then back to center. You are welcome to heel toe that left foot into the middle of the mat a little more. Take the left hand out to the side. Draw those hips straight back, ground into your left heel. You can walk your hands back. So you want your spine long. Sometimes when we do this type of work and we try to open through the back of the thigh, we get very rounded. We get very closed off. And my hope for you is that that can stay open. So hence the blocks that give you a lot more spaciousness, offering up the heart, looking forward, keeping the neck nice and long. Notice that those hips are square. So now we have the ability to tune into what would that be like in all these different places. Naturally, your left side is going to be drawn forward in this position. Pull that left hip back a little, square the right one up. Inhale, offer up the heart, extend. Exhale, round, ground into that left heel, keep a little micro bend in the knee. Inhale, extend. And exhale, round. And gently back off. From here, we're gonna find our way down onto our backs. You will have both blocks on either side of you. You can supplement massage balls for this next piece. I'm just gonna peek at the clock real quick and see how we're doing on time. So we're good, we got about 17 and a half minutes left practice. So um, from here, we're gonna come down to the back. I'll show you what it looks like with the massage balls. These, um, there's lots of different balls that you can use for massage, but I like these, these are, um, they're like a few if you do a Google search for hurt so good, you'll find these. They're a little softer than a lacrosse ball and they're about the size of a softball. So they're, they're my favorite. You might have something that you like better. You can use lacrosse balls. You can use tennis balls. Uh, so just come on down to your back. You can use blocks, which is what I will show you for tonight. And then I'll show you the alternatives. So you're gonna come down, bring your feet onto the mat, knees bent, one block on either side. You could use a foam roller for this too. Um, there's different advantages to that. Having two separate pieces is really helpful for doing work on both sides of the pelvis versus having it go across the middle of the pelvis. So with the block on each side, you'll bring them into with your hands. And then I want you to bring the corners of your block together. So you create like a V that you can look at. That will mirror an echo underneath the hip. So you want your blocks kind of pointing forward and out. So press into your heels. Bring those blocks underneath your hips so that those corners are either touching or pretty close to touching. And you can adjust this as needed. Um, again, if you just have a roller, place that perpendicular to the length of the body underneath the hips, that'll work just fine. If this is too intense, so that V shape might be too much for you tonight, then you'll just bring those short ends of the block together and that'll be a little bit more gentle. Now, before we go elsewhere, Notice that you can relax and not have your blocks slide out and away from you. Make any little shifts that you need to. So depending upon the texture of your mat, sometimes the blocks want to slide. Um, they're, they're pretty tack and, and still on this particular mat that I have tonight. I have a cork mat that they slide all over the place on. So I, what I'll usually do and tell students to do if they have that is you just hold onto your blocks with your hands. It's a little bit more active, but it helps keep them still. So once they're in the right spot, You'll gently start to find lightness in your feet and bring those knees right up over your hips. Now you have kind of a plumb line down through the femur bone there. And you will observe pretty quickly that there's a lot of um, amnestic adhesion or, or stuck stuff right along the borders of your sacrum, that bone in the middle of the pelvis. 
So from here, knees bent, we're just going to find a little tick-tock movement. There. So just let those knees move left to right. Notice what happens in your breath, in your face. Does your face grimace? Does it feel okay for you? And then depending upon the intensity that you desire and that you can tolerate, your knees can stay bent or you can lengthen your legs and bring your feet up. I find that when I bring my legs up, I have to shift my blocks a little bit. So I find that I kind of have to like hinge myself a little bit more onto them in order to, it doesn't have to be this way, but in order to get a place where the extension of the leg feels pretty effortless, that's what I need to do to adjust. It could be different for your body. Um, but ideally, you want to make this as little effort as possible for this piece. So once you've got the ideal spot for your legs, be it long knees or bent, you'll continue with your TikTok, and then you'll let it take a little bit more of a circular movement. And now we're making just slightly different points of contact there. And observe what happens in your upper body. Do you crawl away from it? Do you hunch? Do you shrug? Do you clench your fists? Do you clench your jaw? Change direction with those circles. Relax your face, relax your mouth. And then go ahead and part your feet, either with the knees bent or long, doesn't matter. Start to come out wide, sweep forward, around together, and back up. So nice big sweeping circle there. You may notice some clicking, some popping, some grinding. Most of that isn't bad. We all have different body sounds that happen. See if we can figure great about it. And then let's change direction with those circles. And if you would like, you can. So we'll do one more of those mirror image circles, right? And then offer you just isolate one side. So keep one leg up, take the other leg out and around, and then let it come right up to meet it. And again, out and around. And then go ahead and switch and just get creative. So there's no right or wrong way to do this type of work. Um, we all tend to have more going on on one side. And the other, maybe you find a really sweet spot that you want to kind of get into just a little bit deeper, a little bit more, kind of linger in that, that swoosh of the circle. And then come back through and just experiment. So as I mentioned earlier, it's not about getting it over with and being quick. When you go slow, you discover a lot more. And when you discover those, those hurt so good spots, you can do some pretty effective work. So again, just being creative with your movement. Now you can take them both out and around. Maybe you go in um, kind of like hips lateral circles or create almost like a, a figure eight pattern. I love doing that. It's great. So yeah, we're affecting the hips. Absolutely. We're all also affecting our nervous system. So when we experiment with these different types of movement, we try to control the at the same pace and we do opposing movements or we, we circle in opposing directions. We're actually building a lot better neuromuscular communication. Very more precision. And the outcome of that is much um, communicative. No, we all have one side that's stronger. We all have one side that tends to feel easier to, to squeeze with, to signal with. And when we utilize them independently, we get a little bit more of insight into some of that patterning. I'm sure it's very vivid to you when you're actually mounted and riding, but here you get a little bit more of insight into how that affects the SI joints, how that affects some of the deeper musculature in the seat. So we'll just breathe there at center for a moment and then extend. left it out you can bring that left foot down onto the mat both um, the hips are still supported by that other block you'll bend your right knee so that you have around a 90 degree angle at the knee and that foot can remain flat now 
you are welcome to shift your blocks. Um, just make little adjustments as needed. So I know for me, I wanted to go into those a little bit more. Left leg is passive, right leg is active. Lumbar spine is kind of dropping down toward the earth there. So now we're gonna work a little bit of core work in this. Keep that right ankle at the knee. Go ahead and lower that right foot down like you're gonna dip that heel into water, inhale. On your exhale, gently float it up. Keep that right angle at the knee. So we're working deep core muscle, the psoas. Keep that foot flexed. Actually, you know what? Since we're riders, we're gonna flex it a lot more. I want you to start to feel that heel pressing forward. Keep that angle. Gently lower, keep the angle at the knee. Heel touches the earth gently. Left side stays soft and float it up. And we'll do that again one more time. Take it down. Remember to breathe. Inhale and exhale, take it up, and that's a lot of work. And we'll go ahead and lengthen it out, let it get so soft and passive, and we'll experience that on the other side. So we need to just bend that left knee, drag the foot up, and then float it up so you have that 90 degree angle, that flexion in the ankle, and slowly lower it down. Inhale. Exhale, slowly lower it up. So here, what we're actually focusing on is a deep core muscle. Let's do two more, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a moment. Keep the upper body relaxed and soft, lower it down, take a breath. Exhale, the lumbar spine is heavy to the earth, float it up, keep that right angle, it's slow and controlled. And one more time, take it down. Inhale. And float it up. And then gently let it come out, let it get long. Let the ankles be soft. You can kind of windshield wiper for a moment here. So we have just a gentle elevation of blocks underneath the hips or a roller. Hands can be at the bony points of the hips, the as is points here for now. Adjust your shoulders as needed. So one of the things that I'd love for you to start to explore, and this may be something you've already, um, you're already well versed in. I'm just assuming any possibility right now, but is the relationship between the deep core and the way that your leg aligns itself in your riding all the way from where your toes are so whether you know depending upon like we often think okay sponges at the front of the ankle weight into your things like that it might not have anything to do with your ankle joint it could all be up here so i want you to start to notice in your riding those little things and if there is a reflection that's coming from something above it an old uh, figure of speech that I've, I've often referred to in my practice both in movement and riding but also in body work is as above so below kind of a magic principle um, but there, it's absolutely sincere and true so where we have things like uh, a shift to the pelvis, like that anterior shift to, for me, it's on the right side. That will travel all the way down the leg and it will present as a toe that tends to stick out a little more or a heel that doesn't want to flex and drop. It has nothing to do with the ankle. The ankle can be affected, but the problem is up above. And so when we focus on that area, when we start to bring our awareness up above, and start to correct that and bring the subtlety and awareness into that. And we can affect the outcome that, we were, that we're looking for below. So just starting to let the body melt into the blocks there. And we'll take another breath here in this very passive place for now. And exhale. And then gently bring your feet onto the mat, knees bent. Round just enough so that you can slide the blocks out from underneath your hips. Place your blocks aside. You invite your right ankle over your left thigh. So coming into a very passive figure four. That right knee will drop forward. Feel for a quality of softness through the front of the right hip. That area tends to be chronically grabby on a lot of us. See if you can let that knee drop. Maybe you bring a hand there. Touch is one of, as we all know, um, touch is such a very vivid form of communication. So a hand can be everything that your body needs in order to understand how to let go. 
and then feel for getting soft deep into the joint. So let that, that hand introduce a softening all the way down through the hip, down into the mat floor. Once you've found that, gently begin to rock your left knee side to side. Small movement, maybe three to four inches left to right, not a big movement. You are welcome to keep that right hand resting on that hip crease if you need to. I like to bring my arms out to like cactus or goalpost arms. It's really nice for opening up the shoulders and the breath. But if you want to, you can keep your hand on your hip. So we'll rock that side to side. And again, that right knee is heavy. That right hip crease is soft. This is a more um, a rocking passive way of letting go of that deeper core muscle. So that muscle that I'm talking about, it's called the psoas muscle. It is where your legs begin. So the psoas start at the spine and then it grows. There's one on either side. It's the filet mignon of the body. So it grows, it travels down and then attaches on the inside of the femur bone right near the groin area. So when we rock, we're letting that always go through passive movement. And a couple more rocks from side to side. So mammals are very similar in their anatomy. Humans, um, horses, cows, we all have a lot of the same musculature. They do different things uh, between bipeds and quadrupeds. Let that right foot come down. And then we'll switch over to the left. Left knee gets soft, drops forward. Left hip crease is soft. You'll feel that melting quality down through the joint. That knee will rock side to the side. So, so in experience, Length and lifting our the body to go, we start to roll differently. We get knees into it. So when we do this movement, you might get a little shake, like a little tremor of truth, a little fatigue shake, a little bit of like a neuromuscular negotiation. Your body's basically saying, "Should I stay or should I go? Should I let go or should I hold on?" And if you have a real strong pattern of holding, it's probably fighting that inclination. Like, no, 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 I've got to hold. I've got to hold. Um, Horseback riders specifically, doesn't matter what your riding discipline is, we are very uh, lifted through the inner line of the body. So we have a lot, if you watch, if you like watching bodies move, I do. Um, we have a lot of lift through the inside of the thigh. We have a tremendous amount of lift up through the inner body. So it comes all the way up from the inner body, inner thigh. It continues up into the spine. Posturally, it'll present as a very posterior tilted pelvis, um, but you'll almost see like when you see like bow legs, and not saying that any of us have that, but sometimes it's not about the actual bowing of the bone. It's just that lifting of the fascia of that inner line. So when we ask it to let go through this rocking, it can, it can have a, quite a bit of a negotiation. Let's let that get soft. Let that left foot come down onto the mat for a moment. And you can invite your legs just to lengthen out here, laying flat briefly, let your ankles be soft and heavy. And then just take a moment, let your ankles kind of flop around, get really passive with this. So no effort or as little effort as possible. Think of it as that game you played as a kid. Like you say, let me have your arm in your hand, you know, let me do whatever I want. And then you end up making somebody smack themselves. We're not going to do that, but it's that level of surrender in the movement. So as little effort as possible, and then find a place where you're just kind of resting. No effort, no alignment. Begin to trace left to right side. Notice the contact of your hips, the contact of the back of, or the outside of the thigh, the contact behind the knee, the low leg, the heel, the ankle, the foot, how close or how far from the earth it is. Take a breath. Let it out. With as little effort as possible, float up just enough so you can peek at your legs. Are your feet pointing evenly? Are they pointing different? So maybe you've got one kind of up and one kind of out. Just notice. Let the back of the neck be heavy and soft again. 
So again, tracing that sensation, that awareness through the back of the thighs and those primary and secondary curves, how close and how far away things are from the mat. What side feels heavier? What side feels more weak or more alive? Take a couple more breaths there. Chances are you don't have a mirror image side to side. That's okay. It's an observation for now, and then it's information to work with in the future. From there, gently bend your knees and slide your feet up towards your hips, and then invite your feet up off the mat. Embrace your legs. Gently rock side to side. A lot of people will hug their knees into the chest. I used to do that a lot. I don't like doing that now. Um, it's personal reference. Maybe you love the way that makes your lower back feel. I find I get way too grabby in my hips with that. So I actually like to bring my feet up and then hold my kneecaps with my hands and rock there. And that way I can get that rocking that I desire in the hips and the low back without the grabbing in the hip crease. So it actually is a little bit more of a release through the front and back body. Notice that your elbows are relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed, your neck is relaxed. So just finding that little bit of rocking there. Release your left foot down onto the mat. Invite your right foot over to the left. We're not gonna prop it this time. Take your left hand to cup the bottom of the left of the right foot. So that left hand kind of comes under and then those fingers over the outer edge. The right hand will cradle the outside of the knee. You'll guide that right shin toward your left shoulder. You'll feel a pretty bright stretch through the outside of the right side of the air, and then we'll find out positions for that. So you're going to press the outside of the shin into the hands and release and let it come deeper. Find out position, press, linger, and one more time, press and release. Play with the angle of the knee, lift and lower the foot a little. Notice if you find a sweet spot, maybe something's a little brighter for you, maybe you can get a little deeper, go into it, find out position, and press again. And then release the whole thing down to the mat. You can keep that left like, uh, foot on the mat if you like that. You can lengthen it out if you prefer. Personal reference, lift the left foot up. Left hand to the outside of the knee. Right hand underneath that left foot. Cupping the bottom of the foot to the outside edge of the hand. Drawing that shin and low leg across toward your right shoulder. Notice that your head stays on the mat. So we're not popping up. You want to stay nice and, and passive. Finding that stretch there, that sweetness through the hip. Find out position, press. So you're kind of like, if I wasn't holding with my hands, I'd be pressing my leg out and away. So it, it is quite a bit of press and effort. And then let it be so soft and passive. Let it get juicy. Press, resist, and soften. Take a breath. And one more time, press and soften. Play with the angle of the knee. Find that sweet spot. You'll find something a little brighter, a little more vivid once you've found it. Take it slightly deeper into that shin to shoulder effort and then find that opposition and press and release. Let it go, let it come all the way up. up. Take a long stretch, bring your arms overhead, reach through hands and feet, inhale. On your exhale, gently gather yourself in towards center, invite your hands behind your thighs, inhale, feet and hips lift. Exhale, rock and roll, come on up. You can play with balance here briefly. We'll do that again two more times. Inhale, take it back, lift your hips. Exhale, rock it up. See if you can actually make contact with your low back. One more time, take it back, inhale. Exhale, come on up. Bring your feet together. We'll find what's called Baddha Konasana or bound angle. So the feet are together, the knees come out, think of butterflying the legs there. There are two very different expressions of this that we'll play with. Hands come to the shins here for now. It isn't about how close your feet are to your hips. So if you're feeling pinching or discomfort, make some shifts. You can bring your feet farther away. Hands at the shins, elbows are gonna bend in toward the rib cage, lift up through your heart. Let your shoulders kind of traction down away from your ears. Inhale, exhale, round through your spine. Keep that traction, keep that drawing of those elbows close toward the ribs. You might even feel a nice stretch through the mid back. Inhale, extend, press your toes firmly to each other. Exhale, round. Now one more time, inhale, extend. 
and exhale, fold. And here we get a more passive quality. So we went, we did that very active version a moment ago. Now we're getting kind of liquid. You can let your spine round and get super soft here. Let your head hang. I'm just gonna check the time one more time here. Yeah, so we're getting close to done. Uh, so we're just gonna breathe here briefly. And then let that get really, really soft. One more breath there, inhale. And exhale, slowly come up. And as you come up, press your feet firmly together. Notice the support you get when you utilize that inner line of the body. It's a very conditioned part of a rider's body. It can help you with so many things. So here we are, nice and tall. Ground firmly down through your sits bones. Invite those hip creases to relax. See if you can get deep support through the upper body without the legs being a super active part of this. So less press through the feet more hugging into the inner body, grounding down through the sits bones, so soft through the shoulders, and then invite those knees up manually there. And we'll close with that non-habitual leg cross. So again, and if you're not sure what it is, that's, that's a good sign. If you're like, I don't know what my pattern and habit is, that's fine. So just finding that comfortable seat. It doesn't have to be cross leg. It can be whatever your body is in the mood for right now. Take a little uh, inventory, notice, invite in your breath there. And let it out. Just observe the alchemy, the temperance of your practice. Bring your hands to the heart. Bring your heart to the hands. Thank you so much for practicing with me. The horse lover in me honors and sees the horse lover in you. When we are in that place, we are one. Namaste. Thank you. Have a beautiful evening or day if you're taking this class leader. And I hopefully will see you soon. If you have any questions, please feel welcomed. You are always welcome to ask now. You can send me notes and messages on social media. I love that too. So thanks so much.